Saganesia Murasaki Komachi, go time on the repot. So just a quick refresher because there was a mention, a comment from Michelle, from her channel, Michelle's Life on Repeat, regarding, you know, clear pots and clearly my inner pots are not clear. And yes, like to see the roots and I would like to as well, but I can't get my inner pots in clear. Quick refresh on how I also decide and judge when it is necessary to repot my orchids if I can't see the roots. One very clear thing for me is my support. This one is back from the first days when I was using the metal and taping it up, and that was when the orchids were coming in very quickly. That my white wire, that was way too expensive to use for all the orchids that were coming in. So cost saving factor, the support tells me this was the first batch. Secondly, I know, for example, in this case, where this orchid came from, and that was purchased or it arrived in my collection in 2018, September. If I don't know that because of the tag being identified as such, and I use my personalized tags where I don't put repotting dates on, I go by the year of the arrival of the orchid that I leave on my tag, and then I just calculate, is it three years, is it two years from when I got the orchid and I just do the math and say, whoops, it's time for a repot. That is another option. Another option has been that tags are normally tight in the pot. So that would be a signal for me. It is pot bound. It's time to go and check the root system, refresh it, repot. And another signal is when I fill up the pot with the water that I'm soaking the orchid in prior to a repot, that I get very few or no bubbles at all coming up. There is no gargling in the pot when the water goes through and goes down into the bottom. And secondly, how quickly the water just stays on the surface and doesn't need to be topped up. So there are several factors here that tell me my zygonesia needs to be repotted and I have root growth coming. Normally, if I didn't need to repot, well, happy days, the orchid stays in the pot. But considering all the factors I've just mentioned, we are going in for the first repot ever of Zygonesia Murasaki Komachi. So thank you very, very much for joining me. Let's have a look, see how this orchid has done in the pot for two and a half years. Considering it is of the Zygopetalum genus, there is obviously a sensitivity factor to the roots. We'll figure all that out as we go, but first of all, let's have a look. Okay, let's be cautious before anything radical happens to the root system. I try to be very careful until I know what I'm dealing with in the pot. We'll give it a nice, proper, shiny, new support as well. The water I was soaking this one in was fertilized, MSU fertilizer at 300 parts per million. It is now drinking very, very quickly. Let's do this carefully. I had to refill that reservoir within two days. So busy, busy orchid at this stage. And let's see if I can do this without being too drastic about it. The resistance I'm feeling at the bottom of the pot is the, it's attached to the microfiber. So do I yank? Gently yank. Did I do much damage? Let's have a look, see. Yeah, it was firm here, but soggy here. Oh well. Collateral damage, let's get you out. This one is going into a bigger pot, I already know that. I have no intentions of trying to put it into the same size pot because the growth is already at the edge and I would like to not disturb this one for another two and a half, maybe three years. So I have some dead roots which we will take care of. How is the support intermingled? Yeah, okay. Let's change the camera angle. Let's get you in close. All right then, let's have a look-see. 
there are some dead roots, that's to be expected. Not too concerned about those. I'm seeing beautiful roots, which is the most important part, that we have beautiful roots and we have roots that are back up. Okay, here is a root that's gone through the support structure there. So we are going to have to fandangle this one a little bit. This one looks dead, but it is firm. For the time being, I will save it until I get the support out, and then we can see if I can be more radical. Continue with the cleanup now that we've got rid of that. My microfiber is entangled in a good root. I need to be prudent there as well. But after three years, I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing. Just sliced a bit of the pseudobulb back here. Got to be careful, my snippers are sharp. I am really trying to not handle these roots as much as possible, but I have to do the cleanup. I have to get in there to secure a healthy environment for the next two, maximum three years. I mean, if this orchid goes nuts and starts to grow multiple leads, then of course I will have to intervene sooner, but that is not a guarantee. So I prefer to go with what I know now and hopefully give it its best life for the coming years. See, this one is so floppy and broken. I'll take it back to where it snapped first, even though it's okay. Let's give the rhizome a spray and see what else needs to be done, because as far as I'm concerned, that is it. So my thought is, do I take this little bulb off in the back here because I nicked it with my snippers, or do I just leave it and hope for the best that it doesn't rot? I think I'm going to leave it. No, I'm taking it off. These little guys in the back. This one can come off as well even though it had a good root on it. Decisions, decisions, hey? Oh well. It is done. If I hadn't nicked that little back bulb, I would not have removed it. And now, I do need the cinnamon. Not using my paintbrush today because it's not breezy at all. I don't want anything falling on those roots. And that now needs to dry off before I put it in the pot because I'm going to be using the water. The water potting up method. Get rid of anything that might have dripped on the roots. All right, judging by the pot size, this is my 18 centimeters. That would work. The new growths have plenty of room. But look at the root system here. How long will that be until that pot isn't oxygenated enough because the roots are going to take over super fast? Here, with regards to the new growth, it looks like it's overspotted, but I don't think so. With the new roots coming, with the roots having such longevity, even the last little bulb that I took out, that had a viable root on it. So these roots don't die off, and I want oxygen exchange in the pot when I flush. And that's why I'm gonna go with the bigger one. Despite the fact it looks to be overpotted, I'm taking the root activity dynamics into consideration with this one. So seeing as I'm gonna go really, really high up in pot size in comparison to what it was before, two microfibers will go in again, and very small liquor. The smaller that I have, 
sorted out. So without discussing pot size, let's just say small, medium, large. This is obviously now going to go into large. In the small version, I had two microfibers with mixed lacquer of all sizes. Going into the larger pot now, I'm going to put in only small lacquer. So two microfibers are going to go in there. I can't up the ante on the microfibers, but the small lacquer will help me with the water wicking properties of the lacquer that I'm putting in. And that'll then keep the same amount of wet environment that the roots are used to just by changing the lacquer size, even though the pot size is going up and only two microfibers in the pot as previous. Here's the shiny support. And one thing I am not doing, or another thing, let's say, I'm not doing this time, which I normally like to do, is to create a loop in order to raise the wicking even further because I do have a dry top layer. But I'm not going to do that this time because the roots are going to push my loop down anyway. So this time we're just going to place everything on the bottom. And the support is only there for eventualities. I don't like to stake my spikes at all, but if there's something that is happening and I need to train something, be it a growth that's not responding to the light training that I do, that is why the support is there. And now I'm going to fill up with just plain water because that will flush my roots as well. They've been sitting in fertilized water, soaking, so they've had plenty. So this will be like a little root flush while we potter up. Let's get you in there. For zygo roots, anything, zygo that are super sensitive, this submerged method of potting up leka is perfect. Comes right on time because there's no abrasion and no bashing of the roots at all as we potter up. Super, super gentle, especially for anything to do with zygo. And just wiggle a little bit in the pot and see that the lecker starts to sink into place on its own accord. If you're seeing the lecker float, I was doing an experiment because I always say the lecker has to be stored submerged in order to keep the wicking properties of the LECA intact. Otherwise, it takes forever to restore wicking of LECA. Well, the ones you see that are floating, those I let dry out. And then I put them into my LECA storage bucket. And this is now day five. And they haven't even settled in the bucket yet. So if you are considering LECA as a media, if you're not doing it as much as I do, but you want to try it out, then I highly recommend that you soak your lecker prior to using it. Huh, depending on brand, but you see now day five, I still have floating lecker. And that to me is unacceptable. I can't do that if I'm potting up like this. So I always let my lecker go straight into the bucket while it's still wet. But for purpose of seeing how long does it take to recover the wicking properties. Well, in my case, day five, and you can see that some still didn't actually sink to the bottom of the pot. Now, because the back here had the little bulbs taken off, for the time being, I'm going to just leave it as open as possible. I'm not going to have my lecker down here in the back. Just make sure that I do keep roots covered, but where that little bit was cut. There is no lecker underneath. Well, there's lecker underneath, but not at the edge of it, touching it. I don't know if that's clearly visible. Right down there, there's a little hollow for that rhizome to dry out a little bit better. I have plenty of beautiful warm breeze. Not too hot, not too cold today. Perfect timing for this repot. Eventually, I might fill that back in. It'll probably happen on its own 
when I do the flushes and all that. So that is my Zygonisia Murasaki taken care of for the next two years, maybe three, we shall see. New roots are growing, aeration is back restored in the pot. Gentle root repot, hopefully doing them a kind gesture so that they don't die off. Should they die off, then I have to say, well, c'est la vie, but we have new roots coming. And that is why I like to do repots on orchids that are sensitive in general, all orchids, but especially sensitive ones when I have backup and new roots growing. I hope that this was of interest to you. Thank you so very, very much for watching. I really appreciate your time. Have yourselves a wonderful day and please, please stay safe. Take care. Bye.